All right, we are hitting the hour. Welcome everyone to Microsoft 365 Virtual Marathon. Thank you for attending and we hope you're having a great conference. I'd like to introduce our next amazing speaker team, Ross Leher and Joel Olson. They will be presenting a session titled Project Cortex, AI Powered Knowledge Network. Joel, Ross, the stage is yours. Please take it away. Good afternoon, Joel. All right, it's great to be here. It's good to have Ross with with us as well. Um, uh, let me go ahead and start. I'll, I'll introduce myself and then I'm going to hand it over to, to Ross to introduce himself. Um, I'm Joel Olison. I've actually been working in the Microsoft space for a long time. Um, uh, it's been uh, 20 years since I started working on what would later be called SharePoint. Um, and you could say that Project Cortex takes this to the next level. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is uh, you see the globe. One of the things I've done over the last 15, 20 years is just making the globe my home. I've been traveling the world, visiting every country in the world, visiting the communities and uh, the user groups and conferences and making friends with people all over the world. And it's been, uh, I've really, really enjoyed this event to be able to reconnect um, with, with friends and Really, this feels like a family to me. So it's it's a fantastic event to, to be able to be so close with everyone today. And my name is Ross Lair. I'm the CEO of Wand Incorporated. Our company builds taxonomies. Um, we've been building taxonomies since 1983. And uh, in the year 2010, Microsoft announced something called SharePoint 2010. And a crazy new feature called the Taxonomy Term Store, and that's when we became involved uh, with Microsoft and SharePoint. Uh, I hope some of you have had an opportunity uh, when uh, the SharePoint 2010s began. Um, we had a partnership with Microsoft where we provided a general business taxonomy at no charge uh, off from the Microsoft site. But we've had about 10,000 people that have taken advantage of that for their Microsoft uh, SharePoint uh, implementations. But it's this is my first uh, webinar and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be uh, uh, here with the old master, uh, Joel, who was uh, I've gotten to know him and he's just an extraordinary wealth of knowledge. With that, um, Joel, I'm going to let you, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you and. Uh, I appreciate that. You know, I've, I've been uh, in the early, um, the early betas, the early adopter program with Project Cortex, and uh, I would often see Ross, who's part of this same program called the Content Services, um, I forget exactly what they call it, Content Services Accelerator or some kind of program anyway. Um, it's uh, for partners to be able to understand where Microsoft's going with content services. And Project Cortex is something they've been talking about for the last couple of years. And man, I've, it's been tough for me to just, I get so excited about this idea of um, AI for the enterprise and uh, just how Project Cortex can kind of take things to the next level in terms of how artificial intelligence starts solving a lot of our other problems we have today. And uh, what we're going to dig in today is, um, is about that. But before we get started, there's a few housekeeping slides and I'll go through these quickly since you've seen this 20 times if you've stuck with us from the beginning. <laughs> yes, enjoy uh, beautiful Las Vegas. <laughs> um, we have some great sponsors. Actually, Proficient is one of the diamond sponsors here, uh, which is the company I work for. I'm a director at Proficient in the, the delivery services. And uh, I do have one Proficient slide for you. We've actually taken 5 million plus users to the cloud. In, fa in fact, I think that number is probably two or three years old. But uh, Azure Consumption, um, Partner of the Year around uh, Office 365, num hundreds of cloud consultants, 300 plus uh, Microsoft consultants and so on. We help people with adoption. We help people with Microsoft Teams. We help people with SharePoint and uh, Project Cortex, I think is going to be one of the great opportunities to help companies explore this space and uh, be able to help 
do a lot of amazing things around automation and uh, categorization and, and, and in so many different industries. And I think a lot of this dive diving in here before we get into the agenda, I want to just present this a little bit, this idea of imagine this, like step back from what you're talking about and imagine this idea. 90% of data in existence was generated in the last two years. Let that sink in for a second. The last two years, even think about that from a SharePoint perspective. If you were to say everything you put in your SharePoint environment in the last two years, 90% of data. Yeah, that's, that's wild. That's wild. It blows your mind, doesn't it? And it's not, you know, some people say, oh, that's all about big data. And sure, we're like spitting out data. And on a consumer basis, we're taking way more photos than we used to take. We're blog, you know, con posting on Facebook and Instagram and blah, blah, blah with our photos and our videos and YouTubing and so on. But even in the enterprise, think about that for a second. IoT, of course, but also we're talking about users who are generating Word documents, Excel documents. You know, the there's so much data that's being pushed back and forth. This isn't paper, which took a lot more effort. Now it's so easy to auto-generate files. So think about that from a perspective of the gap between business strategy and data strategy. And in addition to that, this idea that, that more than 70% goes unused in trying to understand our business. That's crazy, isn't it? We've got all this data and we're not even using it. So let's let's keep that in the back of our mind about how much data do we create every day and a statistic that we should really understand as we approach the enterprise and especially as it relates to collaboration. Now, one of my favorite around understanding knowledge and this when I heard this quote for the first time, it kind of hit me in the gut. If HP knew what HP knows, we would be three times more productive. And this is the CEO of HP basically saying they could be three times more productive. So the value of that just by simply understanding knowledge, being able to connect the people to knowledge. Um, I want you to keep that in the back of your head as well as we're talking about this stuff. And with that in context, let's talk about AI in the enterprise in the information age. We want to help you understand Project Cortex. I hope you guys were all able to see Naomi Moneypenny's session. And uh, in addition, let's understand the business value here of Project Cortex. Um, and there's more to come on that. Um, and then the last one, I want to help you understand how you can accelerate a Project Cortex project. So AI. Now, how many people on here have seen the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? And at the end of the show, you've got the Ark of the Covenant getting stored. You know, they've just found this gem and it goes into this massive, massive warehouse. And in the end, it kind of just pans out. And it's, it's kind of, I don't know the feeling you get when, when you watch that part of the movie. But it's like, it's like lost data. You know, you just found it and now you just lost it. Like that, that just blows my mind. It's like, but that's so true. How much has been lost? In fact, I want, Ross was telling me about a, a statistic about museums and categorization. Um, can you tell me about, tell me, why don't you share that with us? Yeah, no, this is, this is interesting. Um, you know, small museum. Oxford University um, did research as many as half of all natural history specimens held in this. Some of the world's greatest institutions are probably wrongly labeled, according to experts at Oxford University and the Royal Botanic Garden in Edinburgh. The confusion has risen because even accomplished naturalists struggle to tell the difference between similar plants and insects with ha hundreds or thousands of specimens arriving at once, it can be too time consuming to meticulously research each and guess 
guesses have to be made. Imagine that, okay, in this warehouse, somebody guessed, okay, what what the Ark of the Covenant was, and well, they guessed <laughs> wrong. They just guessed wrong. Go ahead, but it's yeah, fascinating. Yeah. I'm imagining People get like tired, they some miss barcode, the some Dewey Decimal System, some little thing's going to end up on some box in some massive warehouse. And our ability to retrieve that is based on how good the categorization and tagging of that box exactly. is. Like exactly. And it, it it blows my mind. Like the world's treasures. <laughs> now think about that from your enterprise perspective. Your enterprise treasures are being stored with horrible <laughs> tagging. That is a reality. That is a reality. So we just talked about this. There's some stats here at the bottom. 500 billion Office documents created last year. 16 billion faxes sent last year. 85, 853 miles stacked high of paper. In 2020, every person generates 1.7 megabytes per second. Think about that for a second. That's crazy. Um, and yes, enterprises are starting to invest in AI and uh, big data. So what are some of these challenges? We've kind of started to introduce some of these challenges, but a big part of it is these silos of knowledge. Often we think, oh, it's some data stored in SharePoint. Oh, some data stored in email and some data stored in Teams. That's not the problem. That's, that's not when we say silos of knowledge. There's some people who think of that being different products, but there's actually silos within our systems how departments have their own data and then they lock it up. And even within that, there's teams that have silos. And then within those, there's silos. And even within an individual's set of documents, they put folders that are not easy to navigate, not easy to find and discover. So that, that leads us to the next problem, which is search and discovery is an absolute failure. And I'm not saying we abandon search, we get better and better. Um, we just, everybody on here, we, we watched Bill Bear's search and AI session yesterday afternoon about how search and Cortana and the, uh, the assistant and how Microsoft is kind of building this unified search strategy. Absolutely, that taps into what we're talking about here. Now, there's the untapped knowledge. So much of what we know is not captured in documents, that's for sure. And so our experts are walking around and then they walk right out the door. Think about how much untapped knowledge actually is part of that 30% who are now looking you know, unemployed. How many of those people are gonna come back? And that's what we're talking about is that knowledge drain where people are walking out the door and you've lost IP. How do you capture that IP? How do you make sure that that knowledge, that tacit knowledge is being captured? So unlocking this knowledge. 5% of our knowledge is explicit knowledge captured in documents, information, records, files, and so on. You know, most IT teams, I would say it's a lot less than that. It's probably 1% at best. If you think about your troubleshooting guides, who has those? Who has your information architecture plans or your strategy guides. No, no, no. That happens on a whiteboard and then everybody says, yeah, let's go do it. And then it gets erased. <laughs> or maybe somebody takes a photo of it, but where does that end up? Anyway, tacit knowledge, which is the knowledge we want to tap into, which is the tribal knowledge. It's the experience. It's the thinking. It's the competence. It is that troubleshooting guide of the methodology of how we would troubleshoot our SharePoint environment or our um, a SQL database recovery or a, troubleshooting a web page or whatever. That knowledge of how we deconstruct and problem solve is absolutely tacit knowledge. And I love this quote here. People are certainly valuable resources, but the information they hold is useful, but far more so if shared with others. How do we encourage our teams to share? Those people who are seasoned, who have lots of knowledge, how do we actually encourage them to share it? Because in an organization, it's actually designed that people kind of hold on to it. 
they 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 actually feel really comfortable because they know something that the person who's coming in doesn't know. So sharing is absolutely important. We need to connect people to knowledge and knowledge to people. And that's the Mott McDonald um, saying as it relates to Project Cortex even. And guess what? Microsoft has been investing heavily in AI. Um, since 2010, 154,000 AI patents have been filed worldwide. Just in 2018, Microsoft had 697 patents beating out the world's leaders in AI patents, especially in deep learning and neural networks. So think about that for a second as it relates to insights of, around who's investing in AI, and absolutely it's Microsoft. So what have they built with all this technology? Well, all you gotta do is pop open Azure Cognitive Services and understand its vision, facial detection, object detection, understanding emotion on a face, computer vision, content moderator, custom vision, and I'm not going to read all these, but understand there's language stuff, understanding heuristics and analytics and spelling, translation and so on. And then on search, we have video search and connectors to connect to other data and the visual search and the auto suggest and the search APIs. And on the speech side, text to speech, speech to text and so on. Even speaker recognition based on your voice. Pretty cool stuff. And then on the knowledge side, we have like the Q&A maker, image search, graph, don't forget about graph, Azure search capabilities. These are just scratching the surface on what's actually built in the foundation when you start talking about what is Project Cortex. But then there's this advanced AI that's actually been built on top of Azure that has not yet necessarily seen the light of day around additional automated object detection. Some of this stuff is absolutely in preview. Knowledge summarization capabilities, like it can read an entire document and tell you what's in that document, which is absolutely part of Project Cortex, saying this topic, I've actually summarized it, and this is what it is. You've got the forms processing, file classification, entity extraction. Now this next section, Understanding Project Cortex. I want you to understand what this thing is. I know a lot of you have spent some time wrapping your head around Project Cortex, so I want to kind of fly through this, but I want to give you my perspective. So how it works, Project Cortex applies AI, automatically organize your content, deliver innovative experience with these topics, card topics, pages, and knowledge centers in Office, Outlook, and Microsoft Teams. Microsoft has a couple of visuals that it uses. One where it's like, hey, here's your content. We hand it over to AI, and AI splurts it over Outlook, SharePoint, and Teams. <laughs> and then we've got this other one where you've essentially got a business worker who is putting paper into this machine with some kind of highlighting process, some kind of reasoning or analysis that happens that um, can then be processed or automated. So you can kind of, it kind of gives you two kind of visuals and really there is essentially um, a couple of interesting things there where another way Microsoft would kind of position Microsoft Project Cortex is it's three key things. Managing, which is kind of this connecting, managing, protecting, which gives you the security and workflow and those advanced AI things we talked about. The organizing around ontologies and automatically categorizing your content. I really like the word categorize because it's such a great verb. Like, wouldn't it, how much would you pay to have your SharePoint environment categorized? <laughs> See what I'm talking about? That gives you a nice visual empowering your people in the apps they use every day as well. So another great visual from Microsoft is this idea of putting AI to work for you in three key pieces, information, learning, and knowledge. And I don't want to dig all the way into that, but basically here's a little insight into the business value. Save money, save time, learn faster we're able to analyze the content faster, we're summarizing it, 
with graph we're connecting it to the experts you're able to not only find data faster you're finding the people faster the people are able to synthesize information faster it's all about acceleration now how does this all relate to knowledge network and often when you, you when you hear project cortex i think that the two best words of describing what is project cortex is it's your knowledge network or just knowledge network and uh, i like this little visual here where you're importing your various types of content your videos your pictures your photos your documents your scanned content your images all that stuff you're storing in sharepoint and onedrive and your emails and all that jazz tag it categorize it find it you know that, that organizing capability is at the heart of project cortex where it can classify and extract it with machine learning and machine teaching with classification and entity extraction and then all that additional kind of big data type stuff where it's insights and analytics around what that data can actually tell you now if we had more time i would jump into a project cortex demo i feel like those of you who went to my session yesterday i actually spent quite a bit of time and these were recorded so if you missed my session yesterday i highly encourage you to go watch that session where i actually dumped jumped into these demos and uh, we we spent quite a bit of time um, with both looking at the knowledge center which is about the um the topics and kind of your organizational Wikipedia. And then we looked at the other side of the world where we looked at this content center, which is more of the content capture as well as the extraction, categorizing your data, organizing your data, um, being able to extract great content. And you can get those demos. Those are available right at aka.ms slash project cortex. If you went to Naomi Moneypenny's session, she also did some fantastic um demos around more of that categorization content um, capture side of things there's also um the uh, search connectors we've got um something like seven search connectors that microsoft or six or seven connectors that microsoft's been working on from sql to uh, salesforce and file shares and uh int intranet websites there's a bunch of APIs as well as as you know as we progress even uh, even Jeff Teeper's keynote talked about um, additional um, connectors even Bill Bear started talking about Azure SQL so yes there's a lot of work that's going on into expanding the search connectors and your ability to to tap in and pull in data so this next section the business value I want you to understand they've built project cortex but absolutely it does deliver business value and i've actually put together an infographic um, sponsored by uh, uh, ross's company wand uh, and I, I like this idea of connecting knowledge and expertise across microsoft 365 obviously with the connectors it goes a lot further than that but um, one of my favorite visuals it was really trying to wrap my head around the knowledge center and the content center machine learning and machine teaching and all of what the bot or the machine is doing with a third relationship you could say it's kind of the third leg on the stool is the reinforcement it's what the humans do in this and what are the humans involved in they are involved in seeding validating and managing where the knowledge center is focused on extracting filtering grouping clustering and the machine teaching content center side of things is focused on training, classifying, modeling, automating. That's that's where your power platform stuff comes in. And on the machine learning side, the knowledge center is this is your organizational Wikipedia. Um, so some really, really interesting things in that same infographic, which you can get at collabshow.com, is uh, seven key takeaways or kind of business value uh, items around what project cortex is and what business value it provides empowering teams and the apps you use every day and those productivity tools harnessing advanced intelligence around collective knowledge connecting people to knowledge and knowledge to people streamlining business processes discovering information across platforms 
like the connectors, empowering organizational ability, driving efficiencies and cost savings. And then the last thing, automating extraction, tagging, seeding topics from your taxonomies to improve search and discovery. So yeah, I am doing just next week, I'm actually doing uh, another webinar where I dig in specifically on the business value proposition of, of Project Cortex. So feel free to join us. Uh, we're going to be taking this to the next level. Um, the next thing here is we're talking about seeding taxonomies, uh, accelerating Project Cortex. So this is the last section of this of this deck. If we have a bit of time, I can actually jump back into the demos if we've got some time here, but I also want to save some time for, for Q&A. And I do have a session after this as well that I'm going to have to uh, jump and prep for in a second too. Um, so I, I like stories, I like visuals, and I actually, when I start thinking about um, SharePoint environments, I think about, uh, you know, messy rooms often. You know, it's the wild, wild west. Even teams, it's like every team kind of just throws stuff wherever it lands, file share environments. It's chaos, right? Utter, utter chaos. So what what was the Star Wars? Where was that Star Wars DVD in my <laughs> in my collection? You know, how many people do you know who have built a book? My father-in-law actually had a guide for his DVDs. You know, he had a list of every single DVD in alphabetical order, and he also had another index where it was by genre, and then he had another index where he had it organized by, um, I think it was by publisher. It's like, so you want to see all the Disney movies. In fact, I think he kind of started keeping his collections toward the end saying, here's all the Disney titles, because when you think of Disney, all your Disney stuff together and all the Marvel stuff together, you know, but you could think, well, do I categorize it by this or categorize it by that? So you think about these hoarders where in their head, they have to remember where was that thing that I just bought? Oh yeah, I set it down next to the lamp. Like they have their own way in their head of where they think things are in these piles. Like every pile is, oh yeah, these are my VSH VHS tapes. And that's where um, the uh, uh, Herbie Goes Bananas uh, VHS tape is, and I got to keep it. I got to hold on to that. It's going to be valuable one day. <laughs> no, it's not. Sorry. Um, anyway, moving on. When I think about Project Cortex, there's actually a number of these gears that I think about. The connectors, the labels, the tagging, the classifiers, the extractors, the capture. All of these things are actually doing real work. They're actually processing data and helping us to move our data, making it relevant. You know, a lot of people say, great, I got my data in SharePoint, now what? Now we actually have a really intelligent conversation around, well, now what? We actually have a, an answer to that question. Or now I've moved all my data into Teams and Microsoft 365, or now I've got all my structured content, now what? And that idea of, well, let's teach it, let's categorize our content, let's tag it, let's um, make it so it's much more discoverable. If, if it's true that the last two years is 90% of our content, let's focus on that last two years and let's, let's move forward. Let's actually build some business processes around it. Let's not focus on what happened 20 years ago and build our business on that. Now, one of the, 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 the key pieces here as well, I think as it relates to any Project Cortex project, is this principle of crawl, walk, run. Now, if you think about it, when we say the word artificial intelligence, we're actually talking about teaching an infant. You know, we're talking about teaching a computer how to analyze our business. So basically you're having it look at your data and having it reason over it to then make suggestions. So this idea of crawling is, hey, I'm going to have it look over a very specific sam sample of my data. In fact, when you're doing machine teaching, 
you actually want to start with something like five of the same kind of document to teach it and say, this is what a statement of work looks like. This is what a PO looks like. This is what a contract looks like. This is another type of contract. This is another type of contract. This is a finance document and so on. And this is how our business works. That's the crawling part of this. And the more that it can learn, the more it can say, oh, you know what, I, I know what this is. I know what to do with this. In fact, I know what to do with this data and I wanna get and kick off these processes. It's plugged into an AI model, which is gonna then inform or it's gonna do this or do that. Um, and it is that idea of how do we get between crawl, walk, run? Um, and I think that as we look at these next few slides and think about this idea of going from the completely unstructured chaos to some semblance of categorization, building out ontologies to describe what our data is, we want to have the right frameworks. We want to have the right set of taxonomy, essentially. And that's actually starts leading us to that conversation of how do we accelerate the idea of moving between crawl, walk, run even a little bit more smooth or a little bit more quickly. And I'm going to hand this over to, to Ross. Um, he liked this. He, we both actually really, really love this quote, but uh, he's like, you know what? I, I actually want this one one more time. So let me hand it over to Ross. You want to send me thanks, Joel. Great, great, uh, great presentation there. Great insights. Um, this is, you know, every, you know, everybody has to go and justify expenditures and justify budgets and this. This is, uh, this to me, I looked at this and I said, you want to some, this is the value proposition. Don't need to say anything else. If HP knew what HP knows, we would be three times more productive. If your company knew what your company knows, if we could you know, if we could surface all of the knowledge that resides within the documents, within the brains of every individual, within the organization, we surface that so that we can find it. Then, yes, indeed, we would be three times more productive. And the problem is that when we can't find something, we either do without it, which is most frequently, or we try to recreate it. But we don't have the benefit, okay, of that knowledge. So I think this is, um, what we're trying to do is, is surface, you know, surface information. Joel, next, uh, we can jump into the next uh, slide. This is um, the elephant in the room. Now, remember we talked about, you know, Juan has been, you know, providing this general business taxonomy for years and, uh, SharePoint 2010, SharePoint 2013, so on and so forth. And for some reason, um, no one wants to manually tag documents. And I always, you know, I always uh, looked at it like on one side of the room, we have our content. On the other side of the room, we have our taxonomies which were in the term store so we would create libraries okay an hr library this library that library but first and we'd identify in the columns okay what terms could be used to tag those documents for that library but for some reason and whenever i say this <clears throat> people start laughing no one wants to manually tag documents and in the example of the british museum okay they misclassify things so between you know the problem of no one wants to tag the documents and if they do they're misclassified mistagged project cortex solves the problem because it automatically applies the metadata models to the content and joel was talking about content in you know teams and you know so on and so forth and you know connectors and but you want to know some is I talk to companies, I ask them, hey, how many companies have you acquired in the last five years? So one, another company will tell me 50 and everything in between. Well, those are brand new repositories of knowledge. So when, when you make an acquisition, 
you know, you get the you get the inventory, you get the building, so on and so forth. But it's the knowledge that resides within the documents within that organization that is, you know, genuine, very, very valuable IP. So all of a sudden, your know, Project Cortex is not only extensible using um, these various connectors, but they're extensible, okay, to new, okay, repositories of information that you never had access to from companies that maybe you acquired a year, two, three, four years ago. So Project Cortex solves the problem of the auto classification, the auto tagging, but it needs some help. And this is where metadata models come in. And um, this is from one of this is from one of CJ Tan's very, very excellent presentations. And the seed taxonomy she refers to, there's a couple arrows there. These seed taxonomies, which you know selfishly our company provides, but these provide a metadata model that informs the AI engine of what terms we know are important for that corpus of documents. It provides a metadata model, and of course curated, and you may have taxonomies already that are very good. We'd say we have very good ones too that we can provide for you. But the point being that it provides a metadata model, a foundation metadata model that literally, okay, will be very, very effective in classifying documents, okay, without any further customization. You'll get good results. Now you'll get great results, okay? The foundation metadata model, the AI is going to generate additional terms that are present in the foundation metadata model that the subject matter expert can say, you want to know some, this term belongs here, this term belongs here, we need to add this one. There's going to be additional terms identified by the AI by Project Cortex that aren't contained in the foundation metadata model that all become candidates to be added. But it provides that initial structure that informs the, the AI, uh, the algorithm, uh, the Project Cortex, that these terms we know are important that we can build upon. Uh, I think next slide, yes, what to expect. And these are you know, quotes from uh, you know our clients, but you know, this is, uh, you know, when you have uh, curated taxonomies, curated metadata models, you can expect, you know, saved a huge amount of time. We we're able to deliver value immediately. Now, this was from an AI cli a client using uh, different, obviously different AI, uh, you know, capabilities. But what they said to us was, boy, out of the box, ta you know, the foundation taxonomies went in. It immediately delivered great results, you know, good results, okay, and then, OK, we could proceed, OK, to do further customization to improve the results. But those seed taxonomies, as, as Microsoft calls them, we call them foundation taxonomies, foundation metadata models, immediately inform the AI engine of what's important and, and the results are very good. What else to expect? I love the elephant, by the way, great elephant. Industry uh, taxonomy is being very useful, will save us uh, a lot of time in our deployment since we don't need to create a taxonomy from scratch. Now, creating a taxonomy from scratch, and this is what, uh, without a foundation metadata model, this is what Cortex does. It identifies terms, phrases that it thinks are important, but then, okay, the subject matter expert or the administrator, okay, needs to say, okay, um, Gee whiz, if it's a geographical taxonomy, okay, I, yeah, you want to know something? Uh, uh, Europe is a continent, okay? Africa is a continent, and Botswana is is a country, but oh, maybe it's. You know, let me look it up. Oh yeah, it's a country in Africa, so on and so forth. Whereas, okay, so you've got a number of terms, okay, that need to be assembled. OK, into some sort of hierarchical taxonomy, whereas if you start OK with a foundation metadata model, you already have a curated taxonomy that it knows. OK, Africa, Botswana, da da. It knows the it knows the geography, the countries, the cities, the districts, so on and so forth. You don't have to create a taxonomy from scratch. What else to expect? 
This is interesting because um, you know, in um, as 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 Microsoft recommends, we need a subject matter expert um, to look at the results, look at the terms that are being generated uh, by the AI engine, and. This is another quote from one of our clients. We found that people are experts at what they do, but not experts in taxonomy building. Editing the predated, pre-built metadata models provides an easy contextual reference. So that subject matter expert, he or she already has a taxonomic hierarchical structure that's curated, and then to do the editing, Vastly, it saves literally months, is what we're told by our clients. Joel, number uh, the next next guy here, and um, I think I turned yeah, over. This I is think something I turned I, it over to Joel. Sure, Let me see sure, if I got. Is, this is something I put together. Um, yes, I've I've been doing a number of these presentations, and one of the things that as I've been visiting user groups, and some of the early things is like, great, so Project Cortex is coming. Well, what can we do about it? Is there anything we should do to prepare? And the absolute answer is yes, you can. And I've put together this list and I've categorized the list into three things. Here's some tactical preparation. Moving from classic to modern UI. Modern UI actually picks up those tags a lot better, but that's not to say that SharePoint completely will be built, will be essentially um, be analyzed. So the the reasoning over your data that happens across SharePoint, not just classic or not just modern, but the UI lights up a lot better in modern UI. And as I understand it, Microsoft's actually considering more and more that it's not divided like that. But absolutely taking advantage of modern UI can help you get, get you into the better, uh, closer to those modern um, knowledge web parts even, and being able to take advantage of that. Uh, the search side of it, populating acronyms, you know, because we, we said uh, it's, you can seed acronyms. Well, what are your company acronyms? Microsoft searched that, uh, they shipped that feature of acronyms a while back. And the ability to tie your acronyms to terms that obviously are significant inside your organization is absolutely gold. I, I think that when you start talking about ramp up time, when I first got to Microsoft, the acronyms are all over the place and learning the language of the company. Think about that. Learning the language of the company. Com every company has its own language. Uh, even when you're talking to your kids, they're like, in fact, there's even a word for it that we, we call it micro speak. Uh, you know, I, sp I spent about a, a 10 years at Microsoft learning micro speak. Um, and there's a number of like weird words that just aren't even in the dictionary. Um, you you kind of need an urban dictionary of, of Microsoft. But then there's the information architecture, the profiles. Um, profiles is a big one, absolutely. When you start talking about finding experts, you know, I was talking to somebody about AutoCAD integration with the, with um, with SharePoint. Guess what? Microsoft has already added the ability to integrate building maps. So adding office location or even your cubes, and think about today how important from a security perspective it is if you understand where your employees are. If there's something going on, like something as simple as, um, or maybe it's not simple, but let's say uh, lockdown. Some people can go to work, some people can't. Well, if you don't know where your employees are, you can't get the information to them that says these offices are closed. You don't want employees driving to offices that are closed, do you? So being able to, to post and publish that information from a taxonomy perspective is really, really important and trust of your data in your profiles. And I could go on and on. I could I could spend an hour just on this stuff. So let me move a little bit, uh, you know, unified um, labels. What you should not take away from this list is feel like, you know what, in order to take advantage of Cortex, we need to focus on tagging. No, 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 no. Absolute opposite. I'm just saying you need to think about what are the kinds of labels you would consider. What is your strategy for classification? Do you care about public data? Is it highly classified? Is is it, you know, in, in uh, is it top secret and secret? You know, what are those words? What are those labels you would we would want to do? What is the retention policies? What are the file plans essentially? 
And are there existing taxonomies in your organization that you could to, to do? And even thinking about this from perspective of, is it the SharePoint team that rolls out Project Cortex? Hmm. Is this some taxonomy team inside of your organization? Hmm. Is this uh, HR or who's responsible for this? Is this information security? Who's who's doing this? Who's responsible for this? Those are some really interesting conversations. I absolutely think this is a, a job builder. I think that this is new roles inside of an organization or even growing out an AI team that has strategy in mind and business metrics involved in being able to say, we're gonna actually gonna accelerate business here. And so then as well, it's like this idea of let's discover what are these plans, where are these teams, what are the forms and uh, digitization that can happen? What are some of these digitization or digital transformation projects that we can attach this to? Um, and uh, with that, um, coming this summer, you heard it from uh, Naomi and Chris, it's coming this summer. Um, the H1 kind of thing, is it June, is it July? I can't tell you what day it's coming, but it was nice to hear from uh, the updates from from uh, from Chris McNulty and Naomi Moneypenny. And I would encourage you, if you haven't seen those, to, to absolutely watch those on demand from this event. We got some great updates. So with that, uh, I do want to open it up for questions. And while we're, we're, we're pulling those questions, I want to just mention a few things. My technical blog is collabshow.com. That's where I've got, I've actually got a, a Project Cortex page that I just recently published with all my infographics and blog posts um, and resources that I've been building around Project Cortex. And uh, I've also got my travel blog. Yes, I love traveling the globe. So travelingepic.com is a lot of my photos. I've been working on some categorization of, of that content as well, where I start breaking it down by destinations. I just started a uh, destinations of the world or you know the dream destinations of the world since I haven't been able to travel where I've been trying to pull out old videos and publishing those to YouTube. Um, anyway, I want uh, Ross. Uh, so yeah, one last thing, you got to check out my YouTube channel. Uh, youtube.com slash joels and where uh you can go see my penguin videos <laughs> no let's okay. connect on linkedin all right yeah, the penguin videos are great <laughs> <laughs> all right ross any last words you want to know something uh i think uh you know, this is very revolutionary stuff and it takes uh technology to a new level um, you know, certainly the technology itself uh, moves to a new level, but the results of the technology. Um, go back to our friend uh, from HP. If only we knew what we know, we'd be three times more productive. It's extraordinary. OK, the potential of this if you do it right. And I'm, I'm excited about it. This is going to be terrific stuff. Joel, Absolutely. thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, you know what? I see some questions, so I'm going to pull those out real quick. Yep. Um, one of them is uh, directly related to some of our comments. One of these is a comment that says, hey, I have a book for my vinyl collection. <laughs> and you know what? Some people are like that. I think it's actually sometimes even a little bit more about personality. Like I am one of those, I think they call them dumpers, where I just have an inbox. All my mail goes in my inbox because search doesn't work right if it's not all in one place. So if I start storing stuff in different folders, it causes a problem. Um, anyway, so I think there's there's different ways people categorize their data. OK, um, the next question. Where did you get that mirror? I think they're referring to uh, Jeff Willinger's mirror behind me. Uh, and I, I'm not sure it says anonymous for Joel. It is beautiful. I think I think they're still talking about the mirror. <laughs> and uh, somebody says, thank you, Joel and Ross. Great session, Svetlana. Hey, shout out Svetlana, it's great to hear that. Um, there was a question that was talking about, what does Project Cortex mean to a company like WAND? And I think that's a great kind of introspective, what can Project Cortex mean for a company like WAND? Well, whether it's Project Cortex or any AI applications, all AI applications, Project Cortex, the Foundation metadata models, okay, literally, you know, accelerate these types of projects. Could be three months, six months. Um, it's going to be, you know, we're we're busier than ever. And um, uh, 
we're very excited about it. Yeah, um, somebody else is saying, what about search connectors from BA Insight? Could those be used for feeding Cortex? Absolutely. So yep. when you talk about those seven that Microsoft's publishing, there are a dozen partners that already have connectors that basically as soon as Microsoft says our search connectors are published, then all the partners can say theirs are published. And then all of a sudden we'll have hundreds of connectors that will be available in the ecosystem. So you can connect to things, for, you know, as, as like uh, ServiceNow or um, different uh, wikis and, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Anyway, bunches of where where your where your data lives, I'm sure you can find uh, a, a connector once Microsoft decides to to publish those connectors. And knowledge, I think that was, knowledge that's invisible, knowledge that's invisible is knowledge that can never be used. Uh, what this does, you know, to the point of connectors, to the point of all of the content, wherever it might be within your organization. It enables OK that content to surface using natural language that we use all the time within our business. It's very exciting. Absolutely. Three times more productive, three times more productive. So if you're looking for a session to do next, it looks like Naomi Moneypenny has a four o'clock session called What's Next with Project Cortex that's starting right at four o'clock. Those of you who this wasn't enough, you were looking for more, I'm totally okay with that. Naomi is doing another session, so uh, I would highly encourage you to check that out. If you're done with Project Cortex or or you want to just follow what I'm talking about, I am actually doing a Q&A, um, Ask the Experts session um, with a number of the other speakers from Proficient at, um, at four, at four o'clock as well, I think. Is it four or five? I'm just looking at the schedule here. Uh, but thanks a lot, Ross. Um, yep, thank you. I and think there's a lot of value in this for everybody. Yeah, the S expert session is right at the same time as Naomi Money Pennies, but uh, it's up to you. I, it wouldn't offend me either way. <laughs> thanks to everybody. All right, thanks. Thanks, thanks uh, to our producer as well. Uh, I really appreciate the work you're doing here for, at the event as a volunteer. It's it's awesome.